Good morning, everyone. Today we are in Ezekiel chapter 11. And as we examine the end of this vision, remember it's a vision that has gone on from chapters 8 through 11, uh, let's see a few things that we can point out that we can learn from, from the sentiments of this final section of this particular vision that Ezekiel has. As you get into the vision in chapter 11, you have the beginning, beginning with the 25 men um, there at the gate. And God says these are the ones who devise wicked counsel. These are the ones who give people bad advice. And then he makes the statement in verse 5. He says, Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak. Thus says the Lord, Thus you have said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind. I know the things that have come into your mind. You know, this is a theme throughout Scripture that God tries to show to mankind, and that is that he knows what we're thinking, and he knows what is truly in our hearts. And yet it is amazing how many times we try to convince God by outward actions that we believe something that isn't really in our hearts, or, or that we love something that isn't really the focus of our hearts. Yet it is stated even in Jesus' day in John chapter 2 that Jesus knew the hearts of men, verses 24 and 25. And Jesus knew how to respond to men based upon their hearts. We are not going to trick God. We are not going to fool God. God knows what is in our hearts. And it's not just the outward actions that he is concerned about. It's not just the outward perception that he is concerned about. For many people, putting, putting an outward perception out there is very simple. But if the heart's not right, the outward perception doesn't really matter as far as God is concerned. God is far more concerned about our hearts than he is just simply the outward appearance. Do appearances matter? Yes, they do. But it's not just appearances that matter. They're not even the primary concern. Our hearts are. And therefore, with these men, God is going to bring judgment upon them because of what is in their heart and because of the fact that their heart has not been turned to him. Only some things in their outward actions. Moving on down a little bit further in the chapter, you come down to verses 15 and 16. And there God is going to talk about the fact that he will restore Israel again. But he says, Son of man, your brethren, your relatives, your countrymen, and all the house of Israel in its entirety are those about whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get far away from the Lord. This land has been given to us as a possession. Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, Although I have cast them afar off, among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. A couple of things here. First of all, this is one of the passages that shows that Ezekiel is not from Jerusalem. Because here it says, your brethren, your relatives, your countrymen, and all the house of Israel are those about whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said. Ezekiel's not from Jerusalem. But instead, they're getting messages from the people of Jerusalem that say, listen, get far away from God. Don't worry about God. Don't try to deal with God. We have been given this land as our possession. We, we own this land, and nobody is going to take it away from us. Really bad advice, and yet something that these people have been told who live outside of the city of Jerusalem. Not to worry about anything. Just Get far away from God, and everything will be okay. Whereas God says in verse 16, even though you've been sent into captivity, even though you've been cast off among the Gentiles, even though you are far from home, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. In other words, I will be a place of safety. I will be a place that they can turn to even while they are in captivity. 
And that's going to be one of the key messages that he is going to tell him to relate to those who are in Chaldea, who are there by the river Kibar at this time is the fact that they're not forgotten. Even though they are in captivity, it's not just Jerusalem that God cares about, but rather it is his faithful people who are scattered throughout the, pe the region of Judah and the region of Palestine, and that are being taken into captivity into Chaldea. And that's why you have in verse 24 the statement that the Spirit took him up, excuse me, and brought him in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea to those in captivity, and the vision that I had seen went up from me, so I spoke to those in captivity of all the things the Lord had shown me. This is not just a message about Jerusalem, it is also a message to the people that are already in captivity that God still cares about them, that they've not been forgotten and that they need not forget God. He doesn't want them to forget him, but rather that he will be a sanctuary for them even as they are enduring captivity. So these are some of the things that I've pulled out of chapter 11, and I think there's some things that we need to be very sure to remember, and that is the fact that, number one, God knows our hearts. That, that number two, you have this idea that God will be a sanctuary to his people wherever they are. And that th in the third place, God has sent this message to the people in captivity, not just to the people in Jerusalem. It's going to involve the people in Jerusalem. It's going to give a picture of what's going on in Jerusalem and why these judgments are coming. But God wants Ezekiel to tell the people that are with him what it is that's going on. I hope these things have been beneficial to you. We will pick up with chapter 12, Lord willing, tomorrow. But until then, have a great day.